Alrighty, so now that you've decided on what realm you want to pick, it's time to select it and left click on it, whichever one that may be. Let's pick this one. And we're going to click the OK button. And then we will log into that realm and experience happiness. So, I've got a couple of characters here, but don't worry about that, because we're going to create a new character by clicking this bottom on the bottom right-hand corner. But if you go to a realm where you have no characters... No, let's not, not, not full. Anything but full. Let's go to this one. Connected. We will have no characters. It instantly puts you into the character customization screen. So, here we have, on the left-hand side, a huge amount of options. And over here we have options. And over here we have options. And over here we have options. So let's go through them step by step. First off, bottom left hand corner, you have the more info bottom uh, button. This will help you decide a bit. And that is when you select a guy on the left hand side, a race that you want to be, it will give you a brief description about them, tell you some of the things that they can do over here. And on the right hand side, it will tell you about what that particular class does. So, what does this race and class thing mean? Well, basically, you've got your humans, your dwarves, your night elves, your gnomes, your drenais, your wargans, these strange looking beasts with lots of teeth, your pandas. These are all races. These brutish looking orcs, the undead with no bottom part to his mouth or jaw, and a cow. Uh, Trolls, blood elves, goblins. You know, pick whatever, whatever one works for you. Honestly, though, I would not pick a race first. That's not what I would do if I were you. I would look at the classes because not all races can be every class. And the thing that really determines the play style is the class. So what you want to do is you want to quickly have a look through all of these and you want to see which one really takes your fancy. Don't worry too much about it, you know, give it some serious thought, but remember you can always create another character later if you don't like the, the class. If you're not enjoying it, go play something else. This is your game, you should be having fun. So you've got your, your warrior, so let's just go through them quickly. Um, you've got your warrior, basically what the warrior does is he smashes things brutally. He gets up close and personal and hacks and smashes and slashes and gashes and stomps and smacks and whacks and I don't know. Basically he, he smashes faces. That's what a warrior does. He, he cuts things, he makes things bleed, he stands on them, he does all sorts of things. By the way, where it says roll, you have your tank, your damage, your healers. Those are the three different roles that a class can do. Tanks. Just a very brief explanation. Tanks stand there trying to take as little damage as possible but get everything to hit them so that they can keep the rest of the group from taking too much damage. The damage dealers, they just go in there and hit things as hard as they possibly can. And healers try and keep everybody alive. That's basically how it goes. Then you have the Paladin. Or the Paladin, as some people would prefer me to pronounce him. So with the Paladin, we select this human, what he does is, he has several different things that he does. Well, yes, he can get up close and personal and smash and use righteous fury and all sorts of dazzling lights to kill what he wants to kill, but he can also keep his friends alive by healing them. And that's what a paladin does, or paladin, whatever. Okay, next. Next we have the hunter. The hunter has a pet that will aid him in his journey. So basically, you can have a pet of three different types. You've got the pet that will rush in there and rip things to shreds. You've got the pet that will just keep things from hitting you so that you can, you know, rip things to shreds from distance because that's the whole idea of a hunter. You want to keep things away from you so you can shoot them with your bow and arrow and your pet helps you do that. The other type of pet does all sorts of cool things. They, they snare them in webs and all sorts of lovely things like that. So that is a hunter. He goes and he shoots things with bows and guns and crossbows from afar. And then we have the rogue. The rogue is a stealth assassin, as you may want to guess. Basically, he's the guy that appears out of nowhere, suddenly kills you, and then is gone just as quickly. He likes to keep things. He has unbelievable amounts of stuns. 
But the only problem with the rogue is while leveling, he can he can't really take that much damage. He relies more on avoiding damage by them not even seeing him coming, and then he's just he's killed them and he's gone before they've got a chance to hit him. But if they do hit him, they're going to hit him quite hard and he'll take quite a lot of damage and, and die pretty easily. In the that type of context. Obviously the better you are with all things, the you know, the uh the easier it will be to survive. But for most part Rogue is a more complicated class you may want to avoid, but really, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. If if Rogue takes your fancy, who cares if it's complicated? Go play Rogue. Go play a Rogue. Then we have the Priest. The priest has two main forms. He heals people, or he goes into sort of a shadowy form where his entire body gets turned into shadow, and then he mind controls things and puts damaging effects on things and, and shoots laser beams from the palms of his hands called Mind Flay. And yes, he damages that way. And he can also create like this weird sort of shadowy pet thing, and but it doesn't last all the time. Then the next thing we have shamans. If we go over what shamans are. Shamans have different things that they like to do. You can either attack things from afar by zapping them with lightning bolts, throwing molten lava at your enemy from a distance. And if they reach you, you can do this weird sort of thunder shock ring around you that pushes them way away and then resume throwing lava into their face from a distance. The other form of the shaman is the guy that, if you see these fist weapons, these dagger things jutting out of his hands that he's kind of holding at the moment, it's called fist weapons. Basically, what he does is he gets all up in their face, and he's going to smack them hard, fast, and massive amounts of damage by doing so. And I mean, he can imbue his weapons with temporary enchantments so that they do an extra thing. For example, one of them is called uh, is called like Wind Fury. And what it does is it gives you a chance when you hit them to suddenly instantly hit them like twice. I think it is. It's really really fun to do, and they just oh damn, it's fun to play that type of shaman, and it really is. Okay. The next thing is you can also heal as a shaman. You just you heal people. Yeah, you create like little puddles that people stand in, and then it heals them. You can you know use waves of healing. A lot of your stuff as a healer is sort of orientated around water as a type of healing source. And then next up we have the mage. The mage deals damage in three main ways. Either you blast your enemies to death with massive amounts of arcane damage, or you set them on fire, or you freeze them in place while you destroy them. What more is there to say? Set them on fire versus make them explode versus freeze them in place so they can't hit you while you utterly destroy and annihilate them. That would be the mage. That's the mage. The warlock. Think of the warlock a little bit like a cross between a hunter and a mage, in a way. In that he kind of has the mage's magical ability, but he also has a pet which he can kind of sacrifice because he's a warlock and he's kind of mean. He can consume his pet to gain more abilities. He's very, very powerful and he can, uh, in one of his uh, ways called demonology, he can turn into this powerful sort of demonic thing that takes very little damage, does insane amounts of damage, can jump around and stun things and he can, yeah, basically the warlock likes to kill things slowly and over time and they also like to hurt themselves to kill their enemy. They're fine with doing that. They will literally hurt themselves by kind of setting themselves on fire just so that they can burn everything around them. It's called Hellfire. The next thing we have is the monk. The monk gets up close and personal and smacks people in the face. That would be the monk. When he's healing, he kind of does this weird kind of martial arts stuff and shoots laser beams and creates statues and weird balls of energy that heal people. That's when he's healing. And then if we look at the druid, the druid can either go into... The druid has four specs, okay? Everyone else only has a maximum of three. The druid has four. He can either um, be kind of like mainly sort of like this giant... He can turn into a bear and take very little damage and have lots and lots of health or he can turn into a cat and rip things to shreds or he can turn into this strange sort of owl slash chicken with antlers type thing and shoot laser beams at people 
And you can also heal things as well, but looking like he normally does without turning into some kind of weird creature. Though he can turn into a tree for that. Just saying. He can turn into a tree. Druids are cool. Um, basically, he's kind of like a whole bunch of the other classes in that when he's in bear, he's like a warrior. When he's in the cat type thing, he's like a rogue. When he's in that strange kind of moonkin thing, he's kind of like a mage, I suppose. He's kind of like a mage, yeah. And when he's healing, he's healing. And then we have the Death Knight. The Death Knight is only available when you are level 55 or have a level 55 character. It does not consume your character, it's just he only unlocks when you have a level 55. Why? Because the Death Knight starts at level 55. And he's basically like a warrior combined with a warlock. He uses dark powers and he smashes people in the face. Both of them. He's called a hero class, but don't let that fool you. He's not super amazing, he's not going to utterly annihilate every single one of the other things. I'm not saying he's not fun, because he's fun. Death Knights are awesome, but they're not so far beyond everything else. They're not really a hero class, they're just another class that starts at level 55, so don't let that fool you. By the way, everybody can be a Death Knight. Whatever race you want can be a Death Knight. So then, now that you've decided on your class, you know, you can then pick what race you want to make sure that the race can be the class that you have chosen. So, for example, maybe you want to be a panda, or rather, you want to be a warlock, but you can't be a warlock panda. So maybe you want to go for, like, a worgen or goblin. The next thing is you have your two factions, as well as the races. Pandas can be either. They're not going to remain neutral for the whole thing. At one point, you just, you have to kind of try and kind of choose your alliance. You know, between either the horde or the alliance, whichever one works for you. The thing about the Alliance and the Horde, though, is one is not evil and the other is not good. They're both mean. They're both helpful. Okay? If you play as Alliance, Horde are going to seem like scumbags. If you play like Horde, Alliance are going to seem like scumbags. That's just how it goes. So don't let that cloud your judgment too much. If you want to play an Orc, but you're thinking, you know, I really want to be the good guy. Orcs can be the good guy. Nobody's really the good guy. Everyone's kind of mean. It's war. There are There is no right side. Just pick one. Um, but also I'm going to be doing videos on all of the capital cities, so maybe you want to have a look at those. You know, for Alliance, maybe you want to see what their cities are like. For Horde, maybe you want to see what their cities are like, etc, etc, etc. Then you go and you customize how they're going to look, type in a name, and go on to the next phase. And this has been a longer video than I intended, and I apologize for that. I hope you enjoyed. And of course, there will always be more guides in the future, so please subscribe for those. Cheerio.